everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have a new tutorial for you today. This one is going to be super cute and fun. This is my, I'm calling it my scrappy pocket tote bag. It's a really good sized tote bag. I think it's about, um, I think it's like 14 by about 13 or so. I have a fun pocket in the front here. Let me just show you that a little better. And then it's also got this fun zipper pocket in the back. And then inside, I also have added a couple of pockets in here, but as you can see, it's nice and big inside. Uh, this would be great for carrying books, your laptop maybe. Um, this pocket right here is perfect for tablets. Uh, this would also be a great bag to make for like say a sweater quantity um, or shawl if you're a knitter. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies that we're gonna need to make this bag. Okay, so just for basic supplies, you're just going to need some basting spray, or you can pin if you prefer. You could also use um, fusible fleece, in which case you don't need this. So this is just something I use because I'm going to be using um, my leftover cotton batting, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you're going to need a zipper, and I suggest an 18-inch zipper. Um, mine's a little bit on the short side, but I'm just working with what I have here. But it's always good to have a zipper that is longer than your project. And our bag is going to be 15 and a half inches wide, so you'll want something larger than that. And I also like to get these um, polyester zippers. That way the teeth aren't metal and you can sew over them without breaking your needle. Um, you'll need a rotary trimmer, a self-healing mat, and um, an acrylic ruler. And then if you would like, you can use pins. I don't use a whole lot of pins when I'm sewing, um, but if you're new to sewing, I think these are definitely helpful um, just to keep everything lined up. Or you could also use some clover wonder clips as well. Okay, so let's talk about some of the fabric requirements. So I have two different um, ways to make this bag. I have a scrappy way, and then I also have measurements where this can just all be one solid chunk. They're all in the instructions um, in the link below, so definitely check those out. I chose to make mine a scrappy bag, and so for that piece, um, I just took five um, and three rows of five. These are three and a half inch squares and I'm not going to patchwork them together because we have a lot of pieces to this bag today but I do have a tutorial on how to do that and so I will link it below if you don't know how to um, do a patchwork piece. This is actually going to be the back of the bag and so I just sewed this row together and then this row together and then this row together all with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you simply sew this row onto this row and this row onto this row, and you just uh, make sure that your corners kind of match up as you're sewing. And then you have like this kind of fun scrappy background. Like I said, you can also do one solid piece for the back of this bag. It's totally up to you. I have cutting measurements for both ways. And again, the video I'll link below for how to do the patchwork section. And then you're just gonna need uh, this small strip down here um, on the bottom of the patchwork section for the bottom of the bag, and that's three and a half by 15 and a half. You're gonna need these two little side pieces right here, which are two and a half by four, and that is going to encase our zipper right here because we're gonna have the zipper on the back of the bag. And then you're also gonna need a top piece right here, which is actually gonna get folded in half, and I'll explain assembly um, later, but you're gonna want this piece, which is five inches by 15 and a half as well. Okay, so that's kind of what the back side of the bag is gonna look like. So I'm going to just set these pieces aside and I like to when I'm making projects get everything cut out first and then I can kind of you know start assembling things all right the next thing you're going to need is just one solid piece for the front of your bag let's turn it this way and then to that we're going to also add a fun little pocket now again I have measurements on how to do this um, with a solid piece and with this um, fun little cactus below. But essentially we're gonna make the pocket on the front of the bag that you saw. So you're gonna need, um, this piece right here is seven and a half high by 15 and a half wide. And I use this super cute scrappy desert quilt block pattern. And this one is from Burlap and Blossom Patterns, and I will have it linked below. You can use any six and a half by six and a half inch square you like. You could also use seven and a half by seven and a half. Um, I just added this little um, two inch strip up here to the top of the cactus so there was a little bit of breathing room before I add on my binding um, for the top. So for your binding, you'll need that piece right there. And this is simply 15 and a half inches wide by two and a half inches, or 15 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide, and then I just um, iron it and have to prepare it, and that's really all you have to do. 
And then you also need, like the back side of your bag, a bottom piece that's three and a half by five. And so we're gonna sew these things together and then we'll have this pocket on the front. Now, because you don't want batting or you know uh, open seams, you'll also need another piece of fun fabric just to be the back side of this. And again, all the measurements for all of this are below. So that's kind of how that's gonna get assembled. And then you'll also need, we'll set that aside, you'll also need two straps. Um, and these straps I make at um, 28 inches long by four inches wide. I just find that I like that size. If you're a taller person, you might wanna make your straps longer. If you're shorter, you might want to make your straps shorter. You could even do short little ones and have them be more like handles. It's totally up to you. Um, and then I'm also gonna add a pocket to the middle, or the inside of my bag. And so for that, I just have two pieces of fabric and these are 10 inches by six and a half inches, but you can really make your pocket any size that you want. So those are the straps and the pockets. We're gonna set those aside. And then here we have some lining pieces. So you're gonna need a piece of lining for the inside of the back zipper pocket we just showed. So that's kind of what this is right here. And this is 15 and a half inches wide um, by, I believe it was 12 and a half inches tall. Um, again, refer to the measurements below and not what I'm saying right now. You'll also need two pieces of lining that are 14 and a half by 15 and a half. Um, just for the actual lining of the bag. And then you'll need uh, one more piece of that, so three pieces at 15, 15 and a half by 14 and a half um, for the inside of the back zipper pocket as well. So three pieces at that size, and then one at the 12 and a half inch size. Okay, so that takes care of the lining. Okay, so for your batting or fusible interfacing or whatever um, you would like to use, these are the sizes that you're gonna need. Now, I am using 100% um, cotton batting that I use in my quilts and I just use this because these are all leftover scraps and whatnot and I like to feel like I'm not wasting materials however they do not make your bag very um, sturdy it's quite flimsy it gives it just a little bit of um, bulk to it so if you would prefer a bag that stands up a little bit better you could definitely use um, fusible fleece or um, I believe it's called so soft and it's almost like a foam it's spe especially for bags you could also use interfacing uh, fusible interfacing, whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna use this because that's what I have on hand. So for that, you'll need two pieces for your straps. You'll need one piece to back your front pocket, one piece for your back pocket, one piece for um, the front of the bag, and then this extra piece is actually for the top portion of the back pocket and the zipper kind of goes right here. Again, all the cutting instructions for these sizes are um, listed below. But those are all of the supplies and fabric that you're gonna need, so let's go ahead and get started assembling our bag. All right, so when I'm assembling things like bags, I like to get the small things out of the way first. That way I can um, have them ready and then when I start assembling, everything's just ready to go. So I'm gonna start with my handles. And kind of how I do this is I will fold them in half first and just press. And then the next thing I do is just press in about a quarter of an inch on both sides. So I'll do this side and then this side. And I get a lot of questions about my iron. This is a Panasonic um, NLW600. It is cordless, I love it. Can't speak highly enough of it. And then once I'm done with that, then I will put them together like so. And I usually give it like, I'm gonna finish going down this, but I figure you guys get the idea here. Um, give it like one last kind of press just to get those creases. And then once I'm done with that, I will take my strip of batting and just lay it in there. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. And then we'll go back and I'll run a seam about an eighth of an inch away, just making sure that I'm catching both of those all the way down that side. And then just so that it looks for consistency, I'll usually run one down this side. You could also run um, one or a couple down the middle just for decoration, it's totally up to you. But we're gonna go, that's how we're gonna prepare these handles. Um, and I like to do it that way because I like to add the batting inside just for a little bit of stability. Um, and if you want them even more stable, you could use the interfacing like I mentioned before. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing that and then I'll meet you back here. And then I'm just going to take my open side here 
and just run a seam down that and just close to the edge so that I get both and hopefully I get a little bit of batting as well. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing down the other side just for consistency and look. And then like I mentioned, if you'd like, you can run you know one or two more in there. It kind of helps secure the batting as well if you're using um, batting like I am. If you're using fusible fleece and you've sewn it to your fabric, then it doesn't matter. Okay, so I've finished both of my straps. They're both sewn on um, down each side, and so the batting's nice and secure. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. And while I'm sitting at my machine, I'm gonna also handle one other super easy thing, and this is the inside pocket. So if you don't wanna do this, you can certainly skip this step, but I'm just going to line up my fabrics, right sides together. This is the inside, this is what's gonna show on the outside. And I'm gonna sew, starting about here, I'm gonna sew all the way around and then stop leaving an opening about this big so that I can turn my pocket inside out so that we don't have any raw edges. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance unless I tell you otherwise. All right, so when I get to the corner here, I simply leave my needle in the down position, lift up my presser foot, pivot my fabric, and keep going. Okay, now I did a little back stitch where I started and stopped um, here and here just so that um, when we turn it, it's, uh, you know, we don't rip it, but if you'd forget, it's not a big deal. Okay, so here's the pocket we just finished sewing and here's our little opening. And before we turn it inside out, I'm just gonna take my scissors and just clip off these corners just slightly. And you just don't want to get into your stitches. So let's see how close up we can focus here. So here's my stitch line right here. It's probably kind of hard to see. I'm just gonna snip off those corners should get both pieces and I'm going to do that all the way around and that just helps reduce bulk it's just a if you forget to do this it's not the end of the world okay now we're going to go ahead and flip our pocket inside out and I usually just start grabbing this is just a super simple pocket if you want you can get like a they have a thing called, it's literally called a purple thing I'll grab it here in just a second to push out those corners. You can also use your fingers. Get this last one. So here's the little purple thing. I got this in one of my fat quarter shop boxes and it's actually quite handy for doing things like poking out corners. And it's got a really pokey side as well. So it kind of depends on, just don't push too hard so you don't excellent poke a hole in your fabric okay so now that that's done I just kind of roll out my seams a little bit just give it like a little bit of a fingernail press kind of so that my seams are nice and pushed out and then we're gonna just take this opening right here and as you can see since we've sewn it already the opening kind of naturally folds about a quarter of an inch in so I just kind of pull that with my fingers Give it a little fingernail press there. And then I'm going to go ahead and press this with my iron as well. Just so our pocket's nice and ready to go. And I'm not gonna close up this hole yet. I'm going to leave it. When we sew this pocket to our lining piece, then it will get just sewn um, closed in the seam. So just make sure that you keep this towards the bottom of your bag because when we sew this to our lining we're going to sew this way um, and so that hole will get closed up and I think since this is a good size pocket I may actually run a strip right down the middle as well so I have two pockets but that's totally optional. Okay so speaking of our lining I'm going to go ahead and just sew the pocket on right now so that I don't forget that way when I start sewing my lining together um, it's all ready to go and I can just set this whole piece out of the way for now. So I have one of my 14 and a half by 15 and a half inch lining strips. Um, make sure that the longer side is going horizontally. It's 14 and a half tall by 15 and a half wide. And I've just kind of um, eyeballed it here, but I believe my pocket is approximately, let's see here, I don't know, about, let's say, three, 
and an eighth inches in on each side. And then I think I did about four inches down. Yeah, four inches down. So you can position your pocket wherever you want. Just note that some of this is gonna get lost um, when we box the bottom of our bag. As a matter of fact, I might even scoot it up a little more so it's like three and a half inches high or so. I just eyeball this, so uh, no big deal. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start right here. I'm gonna do a little back stitch run all the way around, making sure that I catch my opening, making sure my opening's at the bottom. Keep going and then do a back stitch here. And then like I said, cause this is a larger pocket, I'm also gonna run a straight stitch down the middle just to give me um, two pockets in the inside of my bag. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is our one piece of lining. This will probably be on the back of the bag, but it doesn't really matter which side you put it in. As you can see, I've now got two pockets here, and I just eyeballed this, um, no big deal, and then we closed up our seam opening down here. So we can take this piece of lining and our other piece of lining and just set those aside for right now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna work on is the back pocket of the bag. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this when I was telling you about the batting sizes, but you are gonna need two small pieces that are two by two and a half, um, just to give some um, padding to these little zip pulls. And it is in the cutting instructions. I just forgot to say it earlier. So we're gonna prepare um, first the main portion, and then we'll do the zipper. So as I already mentioned, um, I chose to do a scrappy back just because I thought it would be kind of cute. And so I just did a three by five, um, each of these are three and a half inches um, square, and five across, three up and down, and I just patchwork them together. Again, I have a video link below on how to do this. Um, I wanted to save some time in this video. If you want, you can use this um, as all one piece of fabric. You do not have to do this scrappy version. And I have measurements for that below. So in order to get this to the right size, I didn't want to do another row. I wanted it to kind of have a bottom on it. You certainly could do another row. This is three and a half by 15 and a half. And so if you wanted to, for, with the same, um, you'd end up at the exact same size if you did one more row of patchwork. Um, I wanted to kind of have a same bottom as I have on the back is what I'm going to put on the front. And so this just is uh, what I thought looked nice. Um, so we're just going to put those right sides together. And with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm just going to run a seam right down this strip. And then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have attached this strip to the bottom. And I am just going to press that crease flat. And again, instead of doing this kind of scrappy thing, you could just do one solid piece of fabric for this entire um, section. Totally up to you. All right, so for right this second, we're gonna set this piece aside and we're gonna handle this piece that's gonna go on the top up here. And then the zipper runs right here in between it. So this piece was cut at five by 15 and a half. And what I'm gonna do is press it in half like such, and I'm just gonna move this guy out of the way a little bit, so and I'm just lining it up wrong sides together and pressing it in half so that I have a nice seam there. Okay, and then I'm actually going, I'm not gonna sew it in yet, but I'm just gonna kind of prepare it. So here is where having some spray adhesive kind of helps. If you're using fusible fleece, that's also another great option. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of secure this in here just because I don't want it going anywhere. But the general idea is we want this piece to have the same thickness as this piece. And this piece is gonna get put on to a piece of quilt batting as well. And so I just kind of iron it on there. And then um, if you like to use spray basting, you could also just throw a few wonder clips just to keep this from moving around. And also batting is kind of tacky anyways with fabric. And so if you just run an iron on it, it actually sort of stays in there. So um, whatever, you, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. So this piece is basically ready to go. We're gonna set that aside and we're gonna set this bottom piece aside. And the next thing that we're gonna work on here is the zipper section. All right, so here's my zipper. Here's my two little side pieces and my two little pieces of batting. So the goal here is to encase the zipper just so it has a pretty 
um, start and finish. And so I'm just gonna take these small chunks and just fold them in half really quick and just, okay. And then same thing with the top. We want this to have kind of the same uh, thickness or consistency throughout the bag. So we're just gonna pop this little piece right here and we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Okay, all right, now, for our zipper, um, basically what's gonna end up happening is one of these is gonna go on this side and one of these is going to go on this side. And that way, as you are zipping and unzipping, you kind of have this cuter uh, little beginning and ending section. Now, we need to make sure that this whole thing is fi um, 15 and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my ruler and show you how I just make sure everything's lined up. Okay, so I just grabbed my cutting mat for this because it's easy for me to see. So here's the one and here's the 15 and a half. And my zipper is actually exactly 15 and a half inches. The edge of it, the end is, it's a 14 inch zipper. And so the end is here and then this end is one inch in, which is not a problem. Like I mentioned, I suggest you get a bigger zipper, but I like to use what I have at home. And so I'm gonna make this one work. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I know I need to be at 15 and a half inches and before, this little zipper stop right here. So I'm gonna see what it looks like to put mine uh, just at like 16 and a quarter there and then about a quarter of an inch over here. Now, just to help keep my zipper together, I did just run a little stitch back and forth with my machine there. That way it's not flopping all around on me. Um, and I think I like how that looks. That will cover this portion and this portion and give me a pretty wide zipper. All right, so I'm gonna kind of put it about there and there and I think that's gonna give us enough. My 15 and a half inch markers here so I'll be cutting off a little bit of each one of these when I put my bag together and that will be great. So I'm gonna take this over to the machine now. Um, I'm actually gonna put some pins in here to hold it so that it doesn't move. I'm gonna put one on this side and one on this side. Um, so I'm gonna just take this over to my machine and I'm just gonna top stitch right along here to secure it and I'll do it probably back and forth just maybe twice just so that it's a little bit um, extra secure. You just wanna make sure at this point that your zipper is where you can see it. If your zipper is still over onto this side, that's not good because you'll be, uh, you won't be able to get to your zipper. So just make sure your zipper is pulled far enough in that it's kind of out of the way and then run a top stitch down the both of these. Okay, so here we are and that's why I like these polyester zippers. You can just sew right over them without breaking your needle. And I'm just gonna take it easy. When I get to the end, I'm gonna just back stitch, back, trace back right what I came over and then I might even do it one more time just so it's secure. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side, but as you can see now, we've got this little piece secured on there. And for this open end, I do kind of just hold it together with my fingers just to make sure those teeth are nice and close. So here's our completed zipper. We've got the little poles covered. And the next thing that we're gonna do is just trim off these edges so that they are out of our way. And I'm just gonna use my ruler and just kind of line it up and just get rid of that side. And this side. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Try not to get the zipper like I just did. A little bit over the line is fine. Okay, all right, so these are all ready to go. And then the other thing I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the zipper right here because we don't really need this dangling around behind our bag. It's just gonna make extra. Be careful when you're chopping, you, you don't run it over this little section right here because that is met usually metal and you will break your rotary blade or your scissors. So I always just chop along that. So there's that piece out of the way. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Again, being careful not to cut over the metal there. 
Okay, we're back to the back side of our bag and now we're gonna kind of finish it off. So, well, not finished off, we still have more stuff. So here's our zipper and you can make it go whichever direction. I tend to like to um, have it run this way, totally up to you. Um, we've got our top that we just have the batting in. We're just gonna leave that for now. Because this is gonna be a pocket, we have some lining to do. So obviously if you go into your pocket, you don't wanna see the back of this or batting. We're gonna put it on batting for stability. You don't wanna see that, it's not very pretty. So we are going to make a quilt sandwich out of this bottom section. The top section will already have fabric on the back because we simply folded this piece in half. So here's the lining. And this is, you probably can't see, there's a small little um, pattern on here, but this is the wrong side and the right side. So we're gonna put right sides together first. And then I am just gonna run a quick quarter of an inch stitch down this. Okay, so here it is. I've sewn it together and I'm just flipping it over. And I'm just going to quickly press this seam. Once that's good and set, I'm just gonna kind of scoot it up there. I'm gonna take my batting that I have for this piece. I'm just gonna kind of line it up and it will probably go over the edge a little bit on the bottom, which is fine, okay? And then I'm going to take this and pull it down and just carefully press that seam. Okay, now this is a good time to use the spray basting um, just to kind of keep this in place because at this point we're just going to do a little bit of quilting here just for fun and for looks. And if you don't like to quilt or you want to skip this step, then use fusible fleecing here and it won't matter because it'll stay adhered to your fabric. Um, I like to quilt, so I'm going to add a little quilting to this bag. And right here I just throw on a little bit of basting. Um, I do suggest ironing it first just to make sure that everything's nice and kind of smooth. And then again, you can kind of smooth it out with your hands as well. And then I will put a little bit on the back side as well, just to keep that one in place. And you don't need a lot. Um, this is a small piece and it's probably not gonna really go anywhere on you. Okay, so this is the lining side. The other side is the outside. And I just kind of make sure with this seam up here that everything's kind of pulled down. Okay, now we're gonna take this piece over to the sewing machine. And we're just gonna do a little bit of quilting. Um, since there's patchwork here, I'll probably do, just follow my seams and do some vertical and then horizontal strips. And then down here on the bottom, I might do a couple of horizontal strips. You could literally do whatever you want. You could do some free motion uh, quilting on this. I have tutorials for both straight line quilting and free motion quilting. I'm not even gonna change the foot on my machine, but you could put a walking foot on if you prefer. Um, I just am feeling lazy and it works just fine with my quarter of an inch foot on my machine anyway. So let's go ahead and take this over and just do a little bit of fun quilting on it. Okay, so we're over at my machine. Like I mentioned, I'm just gonna leave on my regular foot. One thing I'm not gonna do is any quilting along this top um, strand. I'm going to be doing vertical and horizontal on the rest of the piece. And this is gonna also get sewed when we sew it to the zipper. So I just don't want even more bulk up there. So I'm just gonna skip that. It will stay in place just fine um, with the spray uh, basting and also with the other quilting I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start right here. And how I like to do it is just line up my foot. It's a quarter inch on both sides here. And I just line it up with the seam and I'll just roll down this side of the seam and then I'll come back on this side. So like that, so this is kind of the effect we have going so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this off um, and then I will meet you back up when it's done. Okay, here is our back piece. And as you can see, it's all quilted and finished and hopefully you can kind of see some of that. And here's the back side quilting. And so this is basically ready to be put together. So we are now going to take our bottom piece our zipper and our top piece and sew them together. And so what I'm gonna do first is sew it on to the top piece. Um, it doesn't really matter. You could do the bottom piece first if you like. Um, I like working with kind of a smaller chunk first and then we'll put it on the big piece. So all we're gonna do 
this is the folded edge this is the raw edge we're going to flip that down on top of our zipper um, so that the zipper pull is um, facing you and when you put it on here the fold is facing away from you kind of or pointing up and then as you notice I left myself a little bit of room on both sides of my zipper just so I could kind of um, you know have a little bit of leeway there and so I'm just going to kind of visually center it on here like this and then we're just going to run a stitch right along here and I'll kind of show you what to do when we get to the zipper right here so here we are at a machine um, when you bring it over here you might want to just double check that it's, it's all going the right direction and everything um, I like to put the zipper up so I can kind of see where I'm going now if you have a zipper foot you can certainly use that I'm going to go ahead and just use my quarter inch foot and I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from this edge over here and I will do a back stitch at the beginning and then just take it slow it's a lot of layers to go through just make sure you're continuing to line up your zipper as you go and I threw in a couple of these wonder clips just because it can help now before I get too close to my zipper pull here um, I'd like to just go ahead and get it out of the way and so the best way to do that is to leave your zipper or leave your needle down lift up your presser foot and then just carefully work that by now you may have to and in this case um, I do have to um, most machines if you pull up the presser foot and then pull a little bit more they usually will give you a little bit more leeway um, my other machine gives quite a bit more leeway than this one does just kind of depends on the machine um, but anyways it's usually enough to get the zipper pull past the presser foot and so now that it's out of the way we can just finish on down as we were okay so you should be having something that looks like this now and I'm going to take it over to the iron and press it so that the zipper is folding back this way and then when we come back here we're going to run a top stitch back across here you just want to make sure you're not pressing it going this way because then your finished edge will actually kind of get in the way of your teeth um, as you're trying to zip and unzip it and that's not really a good thing okay so let's do that and I like to use steam here just to it's a lot of layers to go through and then I'll fold it over and just kind of do that on this side as well okay now we're going to take it over to the machine and just run a top stitch right along here just to secure that top piece in place All right, so here we are. We've got our zipper completed and it's attached to this top portion. The zipper pull is on this side right here, so it's right side up, and we've got our bag right, um, the pocket right side up. We're just gonna take that and flip it down so essentially right sides are together. And we're gonna do the exact same process. We're gonna sew along here to attach the zipper, flip it up, press it, and then sew a top stitch to finalize it. Again, we're pressing so that the zipper appears to be completely flat on the back side here. You don't want it coming in this way. Hope that makes sense. So when you flip it over, it should look like the zipper is just totally flat. All right, now we're gonna go over and do what we did before and just run a top stitch right along here. And then this panel will be done. Okay, so here's our completed panel and I just went ahead and trimmed it up really quickly. It should be 15 and a half inches wide at this point by 14 and a half inches tall. And as you can see, it's lined. So when we open our zipper and we peek inside, there's lining. So we can go ahead and just set this piece aside now. It's basically ready to be assembled. Hey guys, so now that you have this back panel made, I actually forgot a step in the video, and you'll see me here in a couple um, in a couple steps ahead where I realize I forgot to do it and I fix it, and it's totally fine to do it that way as well. But I just wanted to pop in and make a little note here to tell you that if I hadn't forgot it, normally the order that I would do things in. So um, normally, as soon as I finish this back panel and we've got the top sewn to the zipper and sewn to the bottom portion of the bag here, I would flip that over or put the right side down onto your table 
table and then take the 14 and a half by 15 and a half lining piece put that right side down as well so the right side of the lining is touching the back side of the pocket or you know the back side of the zipper back here and then sew that all the way around to attach the lining to your pocket that way when you open it up you see your nice lining print and not like the back side of this lining hopefully that makes sense um, the way that I did it in the video still works out just fine and it wasn't a problem but I just wanted to kind of pop in here really quick and tell you that I'm sorry I did miss a step in this but I do fix it and so if I'm confusing you right now just ignore this little segment and just follow along with the video and the next thing we're gonna work on is our front pocket so I have all my pieces here I've got the batting which we'll set aside for right now the lining which I'm going to set aside for right now. And the uh, binding for the top edge of our pocket, this cute little block in the middle, and then the bottom of the bag. Okay, so a little bit about this piece. Like I mentioned before, I use this scrappy desert um, cactus quilt block pattern, and this is from Burlap and Blossoms Patterns. It's really cute. Her patterns, I think most of them come in six and a half inch square or 12 and a half. And I went ahead and made the six and a half inch square triangle here. I made it, or <laughs> cactus. I made a modification though. There is a bit of a um, bottom on this block for like the sand or whatever. Um, I did not add that to it. Instead, I added this little piece at the very top, which was basically two inches by six and a half inches. And that was enough to get me up to my seven and a half inches by 15 and a half. So this just white section right here is seven and a half tall. These little side pieces were five inches by seven and a half inches and I just added those on as well. And then like we did on the back pocket, just for consistency, we've got this bottom edging here. I wanted to do that on the front edging as well. So I'm gonna just flip that right sides together you could also do a patchwork for this section or just some scrappy thing, put it together. You could also make this whole section one big piece of fabric, this pocket, and I have instructions or cutting measurements for that as well. So I'm just gonna flip these right sides together and run a quarter of an inch uh, seam down this side and then we'll be right back. All right, so here is our finished block and I went ahead and just pressed it open. Um, or not open, just pressed it towards the blue fabric. And now we're gonna make a quilt sandwich with this. And then when we're done, we're gonna put some binding on here so we have a nice finish for our pocket edge. So we're gonna set this aside for just a second and we are gonna grab the fabric we chose to be the lining for our front pocket. We're gonna place it right sides down so that the um, wrong side is facing you. And then we're gonna place our batting for the line, the front pocket down on top of that. And again, I'm gonna use a little bit of spray based here. I like to place it first and then spray. And if there's any darker colors on this, I'm just gonna get them off there. And if you place it and get it all straightened out first when you spray it, I just think it's a lot easier to lay it down. Okay, so there's the back side, and then we're gonna go ahead and take our front piece here that we just assembled. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but I'll put a link for this pattern below. She has a little red riding one that I think I'm gonna make next. It's super cute, and she has a million other super adorable quilt blocks. Okay, so we'll get that piece down. And then this side. And I tend to spray my batting. I'm not sure if it really matters if you spray your fabric or your batting. If somebody knows the answer, feel free to leave a comment below. Okay, so now that it's not gonna move around, we can go and do a little bit of quilting on this block. And if you're using fusible, or if you don't wanna do quilting, I definitely suggest using a fusible batting because then it won't really matter. Okay, so I'm done. I just did a quick stitch um, along both of these seams and then one up both of the sides just because I didn't want to, uh, there's already a lot going on here. I didn't want to, you know, make it even uh, more crazy with a lot of quilting. So the next thing we're going to do is add our binding on. And this is super easy. And this is exactly how I bind um, all of my regular quilts. But we took our piece of binding and I initially said to fold it in half lengthwise and press it. Uh, this was a two and a half by 15 half inch strip. And then we're going to take the raw edge 
the edges that open right here make sure it can open up on top so the raw edges are going to be lined up with the raw edge of your quilt here and we're just going to so quarter of an inch right along that to secure it Okay, so now that we've got this secured on the top, we're just gonna fold our binding up and fold it around to the back side here and then fold it over and then we're just gonna run a stitch right along this edge to secure it on. Okay, so here's our pocket. It's all basically finished. It's lined on the other side, so this is ready to get assembled. So we can go ahead and set that aside. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the front of the bag. So I've got the front piece here. Should be about 14 and a half by 15 and a half. It's gonna get, um, yeah. And then here's a 14 and a half by 15 and a half piece of batting. And this is the only piece I would say, if you have any fusible, I would probably go with that because you don't really need to have quilting on here because it's gonna be hidden behind the front pocket. And so you're not really gonna see it. Since I um, like to use up my scraps, like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and put some quilting lines on it. It'll just be a decorative touch. And so we just have laid down a piece of batting. And then like I mentioned, I kind of arranged my piece of fabric on top. And that enables me to just kind of easily flip it back in place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now we just need to take this over. I'm just gonna probably run a few straight lines going down it, nothing major, just something to hold the batting in place. And then this piece will be done and we'll be ready to start assembling our bag. Okay, so here is my front piece of my bag and I literally just ran a few sideways lines just to secure the batting. And um, like I mentioned, this would be a good place to use fusible because you really don't need to do that. I just needed to secure my batting. Okay, so moving on, we've got that front piece and we've got our front pocket, which is ready to go. And as you can see, when you reach in your pocket, it's nice and lined. So we're gonna just set that on there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is grab our backing that we created and put it this direction. So we've got the lining of the backing facing us and then the front, both front pieces of our front bag. So you can kind of pretend like this is one thing. This whole section is the front of the bag with the pocket. Make sure those are right side up and then make sure your backing is your right side down. And then for this one, I am gonna grab some Wonder Clips because there is just a lot of bulk and it'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, so when lining this up, I just wanna mention quickly, if you've done what I did and you have this kind of bottom section of your bag, I just make sure that these two pieces are lined up because that's the seam that's really gonna matter. You can trim anything else away if things got a little bit wonky. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Just make sure these blues are lined up nicely. Clip there. And then I'm gonna kind of straighten out the rest of the bag. And then I'm just gonna throw a few clips. Make sure you get all your layers. There's a pocket in there. Now this is gonna be quite a few layers for your machine to go through. You may put your walking foot on for this. Um, I'm gonna just try it with my regular foot because I like to be wild and crazy like that. Um, and yeah, I think we're good to go. So this is the top of the bag, body of the bag. We're gonna sew from this edge all the way around to the top. And I'm gonna do just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch here, just to make sure I get all my layers. Not quite a half an inch, maybe like three eighths of an inch or something like that. Um, but just to make sure that you get all of your layers in. If you wanna do a half inch because this is so bulky, feel free. It's not, you're not really gonna lose a whole lot in the width of your bag. So I apologize, I forgot a step. This is what happens when you do these <laughs> pockets on the back. Um, so that needs its own lining as well. And so before you sew all of this together. Um, I've already done it, like I kind of just showed you, but you need to add the lining for the back pocket as well. That way when you unzip the pocket, you see um, something pretty, not like the backside of the lining of your bag. Okay, so 
we're gonna just lay that right on top of there. So we've got the back pocket lining right side down, the back pocket right side down, and then the front and the front pocket both right side up. And then you're gonna sew all the way around the side, the bottom, and back up the top, leaving back up the side, leaving the top open. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick so I can fix my little mistake here. Okay, now we're back on track. So I have my back pocket lining, the back of the pocket, the front of the bag, and the front pocket, and we're all good and we have it wide open like this. Now before um, we flip it inside out, we're gonna do one more step, but we're gonna do this with the and the lining kind of at the same time. So we're just gonna set this whole sandwich aside and we're gonna get out our pieces of lining that we uh, talked about earlier, and this is the one that I had added the pocket to. So we're gonna put it right side up and then the other one right side down. So we're sewing right sides together we're just going to line them up. If you'd like, you can pin. Okay, so your lining should be looking something like this now. We've got the right sides together. And then we're going to go ahead and sew using whatever seam allowance you used on the, um, the portion of the bag that we just finished. We're going to use that same seam allowance here. We're going to start at the top, go all the way down, across, and then stop about here. Start back up about here, go across and up. Leave that top edge open and leave about maybe seven or so inches down here um, open so that you can turn the bag since this is kind of a chunkier bag. Okay, so here we have our bag and I lining and I just sewed it together and I've got my opening down here and then the top is open. And we're gonna now miter our corners and we're gonna do the same exact thing to the bag, we, uh, the main portion of the bag and the lining. And in order to do that, I like to just stick my hand down in here to this bottom corner and fold it into a point and then you can kind of do the same with this one. Fold it into a point. And then just kind of straighten everything out. And sort of what I'm trying to do here is line up both side seams so that they're even. And do that on both kind of sides. Um, I find it helps if you make this sort of triangle here. Make sure that this seam and this seam are essentially lined up. And when you make the triangle, then it can kind of fold up. And I'll show you this again when we do the bag portion. So I'm gonna just fold one of these triangles back out of the way really quickly. And then this point you can determine how much of a boxy bottom you want. You could not do, you could choose to not do a boxy bottom at all. It's completely up to you. Um, I like to do usually about one and a half to two inches um, on my boxy bottoms. It's a completely a total preference thing. I'm gonna do probably one and a half on this one. So here's my half inch and here's my one inch. So one, my one and a half inch mark is right there. And I just put that point right at the tip of this triangle and then I use this diagonal line right here along one of the edges. And they don't, it doesn't have to be completely perfect. Um, and then I just take a pen or a marker, you won't ever see this, and just make a line across there. And then whatever I did to that one, I also will do to this one. Okay, and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the main portion of our bag. And this is where a pin might come in helpful because when you are moving around to your, from your cutting table to your machine, things can get kind of shifted. And this, if you stick a pin in, it'll just kind of help it. Okay, so we're just gonna set this one aside and we're gonna do the same thing to the main portion of our bag. And so here we have the whole bag we created. And again, I'm just gonna stick my hands in here and I'm gonna kinda clasp them together so I've got this little sandwich thing happening. And this one's gonna be a little bit finickier because, is that a word, more finicky? Um, just because there's so many layers going on here. But I think you can still get it. Okay, so there's that. And if we fold this back, we've got our top triangle as well. And then we're just going to do the exact same thing. Mark it at about one and a half inches. Stick a pin if you can get it through all of that. And do the same thing to this one. And like I said, this is gonna just take some finagling on your part because this is a lot of fabric. Okay. Use a bigger pin. 
or maybe even a wonder clip for this. I'm gonna put a wonder clip here. These are super handy when you're working with bulky fabrics. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna take it over to the machine and we're going to sew along these um, right on the line. Okay, so here we are at our machine and I just carefully carried this over here. So I didn't move anything around. I'm just gonna fold the first one back and out of the way. And as I can see, I have my line here. So I'm just gonna stitch right on that line. And I am gonna do a back stitch um, at the ends just to give it a little bit more security. There's that one. Now we're gonna fold this one out of the way. You don't wanna sew it again. And we're gonna put this one up and do the exact same thing. And we're gonna repeat that for the outside of the bag as well. Now, because this one's so bulky, I'm actually probably gonna go back and forth over it a couple of times. To reduce some of the bulk, I'm gonna push this seam that way and this seam this way. And that will kind of, uh, in essence, nest those seams and just move some of the bulk out of the way. Now we're going to push this one out of the way and bring this one forward and do the exact same thing. Again, I'm going to make it so my seams are kind of going the wrong direction. And it won't matter what this looks like because it's going to get cut off. By the way, if you're wondering, this is a Juki TL2000QI. I'll put a link for it in the description box below. But as you can see, this machine is pretty hardcore. It's great for uh, machine quilting, free motion quilting, and all of that. Um, it's got a nice uh, big throat space over here. And as you can see, it can go through quite a bit of fabric. Okay, we're back over at our cutting table. And as you can see, um, hopefully you can see, we had our stitching right across here. So all we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave about a half of an inch or so and just chop off that tip. Then get that one out of the way. Make sure you don't accidentally cut through it. And I'm just kind of roughly eyeballing that. So now we have something that kind of looks like this. And we're gonna chop off the tips of the big bag as well. And for this one, um, because there's so many layers, I'm going to grab my scissors. I think it'll be a little bit easier than my rotary blade. And voila. Okay, and then we're gonna cut off this one as well. Okay, now we are ready to assemble our bag and it should be looking something like this. So we're gonna take, oops, we're gonna take the bag portion and flip it right sides out and just poke out those corner pieces. Now, when we check our zipper pull, you'll see that there's lining um, on the inside. The other thing is to just make sure, and you might wanna just put a few, you know, you could put some pins or something, but just make sure that that stays um, on this side. It is also possible, I did this the first time around, to sew it to this side, and then you won't have lining again on that back zipper. So just make sure you keep everything on the side it's supposed to be on. Now we're gonna grab those straps that we made in the first step, and we are going to adhere those and the lining to our bag, and we'll be basically done. So I'm gonna take the bag, the handle, just make sure it's not um, twisted or anything like that. Make sure you have a nice arc here. And then I like to just kind of place this on my cutting mat and just kind of eyeball it and maybe go in about, maybe, I don't know, couple inches from both sides. Totally personal preference, just whatever you do on this side of the bag, do that on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this one in place. And this one. Okay, and we're good there. Now we're gonna flip this over, and like I said, just make sure you don't have a twist in your handle. I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and add the other handle to the other side the exact same way. 
and again at this point instead of using my mat a lot of times I'll just kind of line up my edges and line them up this way you can still measure in if you want as well it's completely up to you so here's a couple inches let's see how close we are yeah right on okay now that your straps are in place and you could pin those as well it's just I like to use these wonder clips when you're doing bulky stuff we're gonna put this whole thing inside of our lining that we just made and so this would be the time where you'll want to maybe decide which side you want this little pocket on front or back you know it's totally up to you whatever um, you prefer you're gonna leave your lining inside out and your bag right side out and so we're gonna open up our lining and then we're gonna sort of I like to sort of fold my bag in half just to help it out a little bit and we're gonna put it inside there okay and then this part just takes a little bit of patience um, I start on the edges you're just gonna line it all up I like to start on these seams and just kind of line those up because they should be relatively close and I'll put a pin or a wonder clip on that side and then I'll do this other side put a clip there and then let me shake it out a little bit here there we go and then I'll kind of just work my way around the edges clipping it now what you want to make sure is that your handles are just folded all the way down inside your lining so that when you're uh, attaching them you're only sewing you know across the top right here you don't have extra handle pieces in there so once I have it kind of in there where I want it you're just lining up these raw edges along the top here I'll take off my handle clip and just grab that lining and then I'll usually put one or two more in the middle just to kind of hold everything in place and then we'll flip it over and do the same thing to this side and now we're going to go around and about three eighths of an inch of a um, three eighths of an inch seam allowance again here um, and we're just going to run all the way around this bag and I usually start on one of the side seams do a couple back stitches and then just slowly make work my way around okay I'm coming to my first handle here and so I can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see that it's turned to the side just slightly. And so I'm just going to straighten it out, try and keep it where it was. And then I will probably also run a cup, run back and forth a couple of times here. You're going to get another pass when we flip the bag. But just to give it, since it's a handle, just to give it a little bit of extra security. And then just keep going around and just um, uh, adjust this edge as needed as you go okay guys this is the fun part so we're gonna go ahead and reach in the little hole here and just carefully pull out our bag so it should be looking something like this we've got our bag we've got our lining and before we can finish this bag off we need to uh, sew up this hole down here that we flipped through and if it tore just slightly it's okay not a big deal um, and I go ahead and just you can finger press or you can press this I kind of usually just give it a finger press well fingernail maybe that'll stretch material so just be careful um, and then we just take this over to the machine and I'm just going to run a quick stitch along that to close it up all right, so I went ahead and just ran a stitch right along that edge. Hopefully you can kind of see it really close to the edge um, just to close up that opening. And then we can go ahead and push our lining inside of our bag and just kind of push out those corners, just get everything straightened out. And then I am going to instill the help of my iron at this point just so that we can get this crease under control and then I'm going to run one last stitch across the top of this just to hold the lining in place. All 
All right, so here we have our finished bag. It's super cute. We've got this front pocket, as you can see, that's nice and lined. And then we've got the inside with our two pockets in here. And then we've got our zipper pocket on the back side. And as you can see, we've got all nice lining and everything in there. And so yeah, there we go. All right guys, so that was this fun bag. It definitely had a few more steps than my normal bags have. However, um, I still think this is actually a pretty easy bag to make. I think the hardest part is the zipper part on the back and really even that is pretty easy once you get going. So um, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any specific things you're interested in having me do a tutorial for, please make sure to leave a comment below or if you have any questions or anything like that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.